You're watching The Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. The Tigers are off to their best start in 10 years. How that's impacted recruiting, plus what it's like to work for one of the few all-female staffs in women's college basketball. That's coming up on The Katrina Merriweather Show. I learned very quickly what it means to be a man. The game is on. The Katrina Merriweather Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. We are underway in conference play. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Wolosian. And I'm Cassie Carlson. Let's take a look at the highlights from Tulsa and SMU. The Tigers open conference play against a tough Tulsa team with a 10 and one record, but the Tigers ready to make a splash in the AAC. Madison Griggs was firing from long range, pulling up for threes as she hits five of seven from beyond the arc and goes off for 15 points. Tulsa, a three point weapon themselves, Maddie Biddles, straightaway three cashes in. Tigers being strong on the glass, Tyler Frierson getting the offensive board and the bucket, but Tulsa keeps responding with deep shots and hitting them, making 12 on the night. The Tigers staying in it, tie game with three seconds left to play. Ball goes to Biddle in the corner and the shot falls as the shot clock expires and Tulsa goes on to win 72-69. Days later, the Tigers host SMU Merriweather buying out El Marone Fieldhouse for fans to enjoy. SMU on a roll from the jump off to an 11-1 start. Lynetta Williams hits the hook shot in the paint for the Tigers' first bucket. Down 12, Maya Stovall is wide open on the wing. She hits a three to cut the lead to nine. Then Alana Davis goes from deep and hits another three, but overall, a hard day for the Tigers, only shooting 21% from the field, no player in double figures. SMU goes on to win 63-44. Let's hear more from Katrina Merriweather. Coach, right after the Nichols game, here's another COVID pause. Welcome to 2022. Yeah, it's uh, unpredictable, but I think that this generation that's going through this will be so prepared for what happens in the real world. There's a lot of unpredictability. You got to figure out how to survive it. You got to figure out how to thrive in it. So we just keep them positive as possible uh, and tell them that we're going to play with who we got to play with and we'll play whoever's available to play. You come out of that COVID pause. It's about two and a half weeks because you miss your conference opener and you lose to a very good Tulsa team. But what did you like from your team in that game? The energy and effort. I, I think that there isn't a coach in the country that wouldn't tell you that when you don't have to coach that, you have a chance to win. And so we're, we have a team where everyone's hungry, where they're going to do everything they can to win possession by possession. And I think that showed in our 50-50 balls, uh, in our rebounding. There's just a lot of effort plays. Uh, obviously, we wish it had ended differently, but I think there's just a, a matter of executing our game plan, uh, making some more easy buckets. So, you know, it could have gone either way there at the end. Is, is there a, a toll more mental or physical? Penny Hardaway has said that it, it's like altitude when you go to Denver and you got to, you know, climatize yourself, acclimate yourself to that sort of thing. So was there a fatigue here or was it more mental with this pause against Tulsa? I think it's a little bit of both, you know, is and no one knows exactly what to do. You know, I go into the office every day and we talk as the staff and like, are we practicing too little? Are we practicing too much? Is it too long? How much half court versus full court? You, know, you want them to have their legs and at the same time, you want them to stay conditioned for what the game calls for. So I think it's just a balance. And I think if anyone's being honest, it's a, a lot of a guessing game, you know, where you're just trying to figure it out. How satisfied are you right now with your rebounding? You have the highest rebounding margin in the conference. Yeah, happy with it, for sure. Uh, some of it is our size. Uh, some of it is just our willingness to go get the ball. And we, we marry it. We talk about it all the time. Like, we rebound every day. Uh, we'll have a short practice today. Well, there's two rebounding drills in that short practice. You know, it's something that we believe just allows you to compete no matter where you go and who you play. Is there a lesson you've learned like from that close loss? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think there's some things that we need to do in practice, some things I need to do better, um, putting them in those positions uh, defensively. I think that when we do a lot of execution and, and for a late game, it's offensively, you know, what are we going to run? Um, and even though the play looked broken at there at the end, I mean, we've run that in practice multiple times. I got a good shot. So you've got to give credit to Tulsa for their defense and what they were able to do to us. But I just think we need to throw a couple minutes on the clock, be up to down four, you know, whatever it looks like so we can get really comfortable defensively. Going into this season, we were talking about Jamira Shoots and coming off 
a devastating injury and how she's going to attack this season. Now your team's leading scorer. What have you seen from her? She's just relentless. She's so tough. And we talk about it all the time. I mean, with Lynetta Williams being out uh, this past game, who we play at the four, or Jamira shoots, despite her being five foot eight. You know, so she's gonna get in there, rebound. She's gonna battle defensively. Uh, she's gonna drive the ball hard. Uh, so she did a lot of really good things in that spot. Um, so we're just really proud of her because she just wants to win and she wants to do what it takes for her team to win and that's all that matters to her. Right now we're in the middle of conference season. It's always the middle of recruiting season. I know you're looking for new weapons. You're going to lose several players next year. What's the perfect fit player for Katrina Merriweather? You know, the conversations that we're having right now, you got to love to play basketball. I don't do well with, with players that want to come to college just so they can get their education paid for or because they want to stay close to home or because they don't know how not to play or their best friends are playing or they don't know how to tell their mom and dad they won't play more. I don't do well with those. You know, I, I need to have players, young women who use basketball as a vehicle to get their education for sure, but they come in here and they have an energy and a passion for practicing every day. What have you found to be the response to just being off to the best start that Memphis has seen in many, many years. You know, it's great to, to hear all the positive energy, you know, all the comments, all the good job coach, you know, even with last night's loss and people saying how good the team looks and hey, you're right there. And you know, it, it's, um, it makes you feel good. You know, we're not really into moral victories, but I will say that it, it makes you feel good going into the next game. Like, you know, you have people behind you and they just have a community that's showing up and just the investment everybody continues to make in us. Along those lines, do you get the sense of the legacy? I know you played in here, you look around, you see the banners, you see some of the, the former Blake great players, which have come a while ago. Uh, so do you get that like push and that history sense? Absolutely. I mean, and if anyone would recognize that there's plenty of alumni in here every time we play, you know, and whether it's a text message or a handshake or a hug before they get out of here, they always acknowledge that they appreciate the effort that these young women are giving to the program. I mean, it's them who laid the foundation for it. So having them here watching is really neat. Buying out the field house for SMU, why did you decide to do that? Well, it's a, a weekend game. We just understand that weekend games are easier to get to. Um, I think that what that shows is that we just want people to come in and support and take a look at the, the product that we're putting on the floor and most importantly, how hard these women work and how proud they are to wear Memphis across their chest. I, I was totally stunned by that, honestly. I mean, you did make the effort. You bought the tickets. You're giving them away. You've made these phone calls to all the season ticket holders, which again, I thought was awesome. Um, are you getting good response from all that? I think so. Yeah, you know, and I think we have to continue to, to make those calls. If not, if there's a season ticket holder out there I haven't got a hold of yet, I apologize in advance. I'll get to you here in a second. Uh, but what we're saying is they're continuing to purchase them. You know, and I think that that's what makes me the most excited because you have your loyals that are going to do it no matter what. And then you have people that are saying, hey, I actually want to go watch them play and see what they have going on. So it's just important to support the people and let them know that we appreciate them coming out. With the USF game that was postponed, is there any progress on getting that rescheduled for another time, or do you think that will be a possibility? Yeah, Coach and I have talked multiple times, and I think we're really excited about finding a time. We expect that to be a really good game. There's just a lot of intangibles that exist there, obviously. Uh, we think it could be good for basketball in our conference for us to play. Um, and I think that that's something that we're both interested in, so you'll likely see a USF and uh, Memphis matchup going on. This ship runs on girl power. Find out more next. You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Katrina Merriweather has an all-female staff, and it's a staff she's been building since she was eight years old. Inside Access is presented by Chick-fil-A. You played for... Katrina too when she was an assistant. Her second year with Mike Bradbury at Wright State was my freshman year. Played all four years um, under her. She was the recruiting coordinator at the time, so got to learn a, a lot, a lot from her. So you know her very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, our whole staff does um, in different capacities, but obviously I played for her when she was an assistant and got to see, um, you know, her recruit, her coach be on the floor and know what she's capable of and that capacity is pretty cool. 
Funny question. Uh, I've known her since I was eight what? years old. Yeah. So we're both from Indianapolis, and her dad has a youth mentoring program that he uses basketball as a vehicle. Um, so when I first started with that program is when I first officially met her. So I've known her 25 plus years. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Have you always looked up to her? Of course, yes. Yeah. She's been awesome, like I said, the whole time. Um, just a big sister and um, a mentor that I've of course, always looked up to and um, trying to mold after. She's just so loving and caring, and everybody, again, like I said, loves her. Um, just trying to strive to be like her. They're honestly just super great. Like, they see you more than just a player. Like, they see you as a person and as a student as well. Like, that was our biggest thing is people first, student second, athlete third. And so, there's just very much, it's like having six moms, five, six moms around. It's just amazing, like being able to watch that every day and then being a part of it too, just makes it special. It's like, dang, like I can do that one day. And then you have it like firsthand on you. So I just think that plays a big role. It's so good. It's so amazing, honestly. Oh my gosh. High school, chance moment. I was playing AAU basketball and we were playing against her dad's team. And that was my first interaction with her that way. And that was a one-time interaction. Then I started to coach. My first coaching job was at uh, Jacksonville Junior College many, many years ago when she was at Purdue. And I called her because I just, you know, new to the game. She was one of the top recruiters in the country at that time. And I said, hey, you know, I just want to pick your brain a little bit as I enter into this. And we've been friends, you know, ever since then. How do you think that like plays into how you guys work together and also how you develop young players into young women as well? Right, I think it's important that, you know, our young women see us in, in, in leadership roles, right? Um, and that we can do that, you know, I'm learning to kind of lead and also follow. That's kind of hard sometimes, you know, we kind of have those, relationships with our mom, but we love our dad. And when our dad yells, it's, you know, when our mom, we, we go back and forth. So just kind of change that that thought process and, and being able to follow another woman that way in, in a leadership capacity, uh, I think is really important. 30 years ago, 30 years ago, um, we were actually at a basketball game because her dad coached this big time AU program in Indianapolis. And my sister played on the same team as Trina did. And so I went to the game and there she was in these goggles. And then it was one thing I remember back then, it was like this Gatorade ga gum, the nastiest thing that you'll probably chew. But I remember she was chewing the Gatorade gum and I remember the goggles. So that's the thing I remember 30 years ago. So that was the first time I met her. It's amazing. It's amazing because here's someone who I've known for, like I said, 30 years. So it's someone that I know that genuinely cares about me, loves me and my well-being. And so it's almost like I want to do whatever I can to be my best for her, to make sure that I can get her whatever she needs to be successful. And then to be on an all women staff. I mean, a lot of people probably think that all these females, you probably argue all the time, but it's like we're sisters. We love each other. Um, I think that this past vacation that we had, this break was the first time that we really had some time apart from each other. Like we go on vacations together. And so we literally do everything together. So it's amazing. It is amazing. And they all are amazing in their own ways and aspects. And so every day it's like you learn something new from them. And so it's been a great experience since I first came on staff with them two years ago. It's just every day I've learned something different from them and I enjoy it. I enjoy being around them. Inside Access is presented by Chick-fil-A. You have one of the few all-female staffs in women's college basketball. Is that a conscious effort? Is that just happenstance? Well, I, the most important thing is to hire the best person for the job. It just so happens I've been fortunate enough to grow up in an environment where I was exposed to a lot of other female basketball players that ultimately wanted to get into coaching. So it makes it a lot easier. More than them being female, they're a family. I guess I'm not going to apply for a, a job. But um, is that just a comfortability thing for you? Yeah, I think it is for everyone. People are being honest. When you have the ability to hire people, you hire people you can trust. And so when you go through my staff, like these are Ashley Barlow, Devin Reed, who I've known since they were eight years old. You know, so we're, we're talking 25 plus years that I've known them, which means I know their families. And we grew up in Indianapolis at the same time. They came through my dad's program, you know, the family. Um, and then Tennille, who I watched play for the first time at 17 years old. You know, like I think that that's just, 
some familiarity that exists. I coached Abby, you know, uh, coach Sally Jalees, Mikhail, our video coordinator. They're all that 2020 class um, from Wright State. So yeah, it's the level of comfortability, but I would never sacrifice their ability to, to do the job well and to have a passion for these young people. So those are the most important things before whether or not they're female or anything like that. But that being said, what example do you think that gives to your players seeing so many women in powerful and important positions? I think it's critical. And I think that it's, um, hopefully what they'll also see is when you behave a certain way during your career, if you wanna get into coaching or even just want recommendation letters, I hope that we're teaching them and showing them that the people that can help you the most are the ones who are around you the most. So of course, I would love to help them get any job that they want, but how they behave as players, how they attack coming here with a, an energy of gratitude every day, you know, that would make me want to have them around as graduate assistants or eventually as coaches or even recommending them for whatever job they want later. Let's go back to the eight-year-old Katrina and you got these guys all together. Are you talking? about being a coach, and since your dad was the head coach, are you already the head coach in that dynamic? You know, it's interesting. Like when Ashley Barlow tells the story, she says that I said to her, uh, when I get a head coaching job, I'm gonna hire you. And I do not remember saying that. And so I must have, clearly, because when I got the job at Wright State, I'm like, I'm calling Ashley Barlow. And I didn't think twice about it. No one had to remind me. She didn't reach out first. Um, so I don't know. I think that when, when my dad put the family together, he there's no way he could have known that I would have wanted to coach, or even if I was gonna be any good as a player. I mean, we were so young and I was kinda, <laughs> kind of ill-built and frumpy, you know, around sixth, seventh grade. So I don't think that he thought that I could turn out to be any good either. Uh, so I don't know, I guess you just call it with fate when things turn out the way that they're meant to. Coming up, we preview the first conference road trip of the season. You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show presented by Chick-fil-A. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, we don't have another show until March, but we'll see you then. The Katrina Merriweather Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. I had learned very quickly what it means to be a man. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield. This has been a presentation from Learfield.